Silamat, uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, so my name is uh, Johan uh, Tuning. Um, I'm going to talk to you about my experience as a, a controller. That's my experience. I worked 17 years in uh, waste and recycling business. Uh, my studies, I'm a master in commercial engineer. Uh, that's the link between economics and uh, the engineering studies, so the maps and uh, physics and um, other sciences. Um, I worked 17 years and that, uh, that's the picture there of a, a truck, uh, a waste collection truck. Uh, so that's a waste uh, collection uh, a truck. Uh, the company where I, work, where I worked for was Suez Environment. That's a worldwide uh, a company active company in the solid waste, hazardous waste, non-hazardous waste, and also in, in water business. So if there is a problem somewhere worldwide and with uh, uh, flooding or other things and they need clean water, uh, Suez can provide uh, clean systems uh, to, um, to provide water. Uh, besides that, uh, after 17 years in waste business and in recycling business, I moved to uh, Vives University College. I teach there uh, the topics cost and management accounting, and partially because that's one of my interest fields, um, I also teach environmental management. So you'll see some parts appearing during my presentation about that topic too, because that's uh, a worldwide issue. Uh, global warming with this will be influenced uh, um, with. I also give some advice to uh, uh, smaller companies about these topics I talk about now. Um, and I also do some sports. Uh, in winter we do that indoors. Uh, during uh, uh, summer we do that outdoors cycling. Um, formerly I was a football player. I played uh, a lot of football, but now I'm a, a cycler. I sometimes go to school uh, and it's about uh, 20 kilometers by bike. Uh, with my legs and not a motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's uh, my profile. <laughs> very thin. Okay. Good. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about is just uh, give an idea where Belgium is situated. I'm going to talk about Vives and also a little bit about recycling and waste uh, business. Uh, it's not in fact waste, it's more uh, resources. Uh, we don't talk about re uh, about waste anymore in Belgium. We talk about resources. Plastic is a resource. Paper and carbon are resources. We don't. Uh, so, um, and then I'm going to talk about uh, um, my expertise. Oh, sorry, I have to check the buttons here. Um, my expertise here as a as a controller. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to see all slides, I'm going to give them to you. It's also for your information, there's more information that I'm going to tell you. Um, but it gives you an idea about uh, what the, the function of a controller is in a company. And uh, um, how you can deal with that, and it's a very uh, challenging uh, function from that. I'll link that also to, um, to ratios. As a business partner, you'll uh, to ratios. As a business partner, you'll uh, uh, we'll talk about uh, uh, cash, cash flow, and cash, because uh, you know one of the reasons why companies go bankrupt. Do you know that? Uh, which is the reason why com why companies? The main reason why companies go bankrupt. Uh, what is the main reason why companies go bankrupt? Bad, bad management, yes, okay. Loan and debt. Loan and debt, and linked with that, what? what? No cash, no cash. That's the, the biggest element why companies go bankrupt. You can have a big and a good P&L. You, you know what P&L is, a profit and loss. You can have a, a big profit, let's say 20%, but if you, um, if your clients don't pay you, you can go bankrupt. We'll see the, the, the figures the results of uh, Tencent, you know the company Tencent? It's a Chinese company, huge company. They wait 117 days, you'll see it on the, on the, on the slide I have. Uh, 170 days to pay their suppliers. So if you're doing business with Tencent, that's a problem. You have to pay attention because you pay your, you pay your clients, you pay your um, suppliers perhaps, uh, uh, or your, um, your employees uh, perhaps at uh, 15 days or 30 days. Uh, but you have to wait if 
Tencent is one of your biggest clients, you have to wait 170 days before you get your money. So you have to overcome that period. You have to go to the bank if you don't have uh, the money. To go. So I'll talk about that uh, when I talk about ratios and I give some tips and tricks how you can deal with that as a controller. And uh, I also talk about uh, PNL and management reporting format because that's um, yeah, financial accounting. That's the legislation, uh, so you have to follow it. But internally, you can uh, report your figures as you want. That they're more understandable. Okay. Uh, I have to say that this exchange, the fact that I'm here now, has been made possible thanks to the, um, the support of the province of uh, West uh, Flanders, where I live, and where VVS is uh, situated. Where is Belgium? Well, uh, that's in Europe. And you recognize Marwan Fellaini, one point extra for the Dean. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to show you on a map and on Google Maps where Belgium knows where Belgium is situated. Uh, where Belgium is situated. Or everyone knows where Belgium is situated. It's a very, very small country. It's only 300 kilometers from one east to west and from north to south. Uh, but we have a very known uh, football team. I go here. If I go here, a little bit, uh, we are in Jakarta, or we are in, uh, in Jakarta, I'll put it a little bit closer, or smaller, and then I turn to Africa, and then turn to the north, enlarge it a little bit, uh, and here we have uh, Belgium. So you see, we are very close uh, to London, uh, we are, you can uh, take the channel, there is a, under the sea, there is a train running there. Um, we are living here, uh, Kortrijk is here somewhere, it's 25 kilometers from uh, Lille, uh, it's 250 kilometers from Paris, uh, you're very close to Germany, you're very close to Amsterdam, that's a country I think uh, you know here in Indonesia, uh, so that's where Belgium is. I have a small a video about Belgium that you see what's uh, happening there in that small and uh, beautiful country. Yeah, they were the two the two symbols of Belgium. I can I, I just missed the button. Um, the atomium, that's the an atom, a million times enlarged, and then uh, you have Monaghan Piss, that's the little peeing man. Uh, everyone comes to Brussels to see the little man, um, and they dress him uh, if there is a, a rain or a king coming to the country then they dress him uh, with the special clothes of that country then uh, visiting Belgium. So it's uh, a nice place, uh, a very small, but uh, a nice place to live. But much cooler than here. We have three seasons. Uh, uh, four seasons, sorry. So, so uh, welcome. Yeah. Uh, some information about uh, resource management. So before, uh, because a lot of the things I'm going to tell you about uh, uh, about controlling are linked, of course, with my experience as, uh, as a controller. Uh, what you see there is um, a sorting facility. Above here is a sorting facility. That's a collection of paper and cardboard. That's separately each month there's a collection house to house of paper and cardboard. There is a separate collection of glass. Uh, here you see the separation of white glass and colored glass. And here in this container, there's a split in the container in the middle, and there it's kept uh, separately and recycled afterwards. Just, have, uh, just to, to, for your information, there is a, a legislation in Flanders. Um, to understand a little bit of the recycling and the waste uh, business. There is a legislation in Flanders that you have to take back all packaging material you bring on the market. That's an obligation. There is a legis legislation about that. So there, there are two possibilities. Or you do it yourself. And as if you are a business-to-business -business, uh, company, and you deliver to businesses, then more and more companies think about now reverse logistics. When they deliver to, to companies, they immediately take back their packaging again. So they do it themselves, they collect uh, their packaging uh, themselves and they reuse it perhaps. Uh, if you don't do it yourself, then you have to pay a contribution uh, to a certain company. 
which is in relation to the collecting and recycling and sorting cost of that packaging. Okay. Um, for example, for a plastic bottle, I don't know if that's the exact figure, but it can be something like that, 0.03 euro per uh, piece of uh, bottle. Two types of packaging. Uh, companies bringing packaging to the market for the B2C market, and companies bringing packaging to the market for the B2B market. If you do packaging for B2C, you pay to FOST+. Plus. You can go to that website, you find the English information about what they do. If you um, uh, bring packaging to the market for the B2B market, then you have to pay to Valipak. If you don't collect yourself, of course. If you do it yourself, then no problem. Huh? Um, we were paid, yeah, there were tenders written out by Fosplus uh, to collect and to sort. So we were paid for the sorting and the collecting of the material. And Fosplus for the B2 uh, C packaging material uh, became owner of the material and they sold it in the recycling market. Okay, it gives perhaps ideas. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to say that this is the best system, but in Europe we are one of the champions in, in recycling in Belgium. Um, but there are still some waste uh, fl uh, flooding in the rivers and uh, laying around. Uh, so it's not the ideal system too. There are always uh, things that can we, we can do better. Good. Um, I give you an idea about uh, the plastic, the PMC, plastic bottles, metal and drink cartons, are all put together in one one sack here. Uh, so this is uh, white and colored polyethylene. There's also <coughs> high density high density polyethylene. There are other types of plastic. Okay. This metal also in the same bag and these uh, drinks, cartons, all also in the same bag. So we collect it and afterwards it has to be sorted. So this is uh, some pictures of sorting uh, facilities. Um, I started to work in 92. Uh, there was no, we didn't talk about blue, blue sacks and PMD collection. It's only afterwards when the evolution came to more and more sorting. Um, so everyone started to build uh, sorting facilities. I'm going to come back to that uh, later when I talk about direct costing. Um, but you see here the conveyors, uh, where, the, where the material is, is uh, flowing. And uh, here is uh, also an example of, uh, of the material. There is partially manual sorting and partially automated. Uh, for example, the metals or are, are uh, taken out by a, by a magnet, yeah, that's easy. Um, this, the bottles of or the, the Tetra, the drinks cartons, there is a layer of aluminium in it. Yeah. I don't know if you know it. Yeah. So if you have um, a conveyor, and there's one, yeah, I did it. Uh, did, do it a little bit too far. So there's a conveyor. Here is a, let's say, a, a can of metal. If the metal is not yet out, okay, or another a bottle of plastic. Here is an, uh, uh, not a magnet, but it called, it's called an eddy current system, uh, with rejects, which rejects um, uh, aluminium. So here there is a, that. Uh, there is a, a metal plate, so if the, the aluminium comes here, it gets a boost and it gets here on another conveyor. The other material is falling down on another conveyor, uh, so that's the way it is uh, sorted, or one of the ways it's sorted. And afterwards, when everything is sorted, yes, the plastic bottles, uh, I don't see uh, immediately plastic bottles here in front of me, but this is, uh, if you look at it, it's a white pet. Yeah, you see it's a pet because there's one dot at, at the bottom of the, of the bottle. Um, this seems more blue, I don't know. No, I don't know. But um, you also have PVC, which is a, a line, then it's PVC. Um, so the, 
if the conveyor, if there's already a, a, some sorting ha happened, uh, there are, there's already uh, some phases in the sorting uh, facility. Then we had uh, invested in automated sorting. So the, on the conveyor, there is a bottle of white pet, for example. The system sees there is on that place a white pet. The conveyor continues. And then once you're above the container or the, uh, the shelf with uh, the white pet, there is a, a push of wind. And he was, the bottle is pushed away. Uh, down to the, the container of the white bed. And afterwards you get these bales. Uh, everything is baled and it's sold to the international market again uh, or to the recycling market. I don't know if you know fleece, fleece jackets. We know it because in the winter it's cold in Belgium. Um, they make fleeces uh, out of these uh, plastic bottles. Um, okay, good. So you have you have an idea. I missed my this one. Okay. Any questions until now? Okay. Now we are ready to start, and I have to have a look here. I have a question. Yes. Do you provide scholarship for our students? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have to check at my previous university if uh, oh, we sponsor we sponsor lodging, I think. Lodging. Uh, that's lodging that's accommodation. Accommodation. Uh, so that's uh, something we can uh, uh, we can do. Okay. Um, so I have to look at my uh, so because now it's starting. Uh, uh, Marikita Mulai. Marikita Mulai. Is that is that correct? That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. Let's start. <laughs> About. Uh, Controlling and uh, from business uh, from scorekeeper to business partner. Now you know a little bit about uh, waste and recycling business. I have to keep the time uh, to look at the time. First of all, what is accounting? Why do we need it? And what is it for? What is the main reason, in fact, why we do accounting? The biggest reason. Financial accounting, and cost accounting, and financial accounting. But why do we, in fact, why do we do accounting? Another mic, but you can shout. Yeah. You can shout if you want. Can you Anyone, please? What is the main, the main reason why we do attract accounting? Don't look, don't search too far. It's just a very simple answer. Yes? To keep everything balanced, yes, okay. But perhaps I don't have to do accounting for that. Maintain our operation. To maintain the company's operation, you mean that the company still survives and can be doing further business or something like that? External, so this means uh, this will be more internally. Uh, everything what you do in uh, management accounting, 
Uh, is that right? No, normally I miss an N. Uh, it's for internal use, where you make profit, where you make loss, in which division, in which country, which products. We know that Apple, the biggest profit is in, in uh, their iPhone. They're now changing, trying to change to, to more services uh, company. Um, uh, the company Nestle, for example, their biggest profit is in the, in the water we buy, because water is not so expensive, uh, it will become. Uh, the gold of the future, they say, because uh, water is, uh, even in Belgium, uh, although we have a lot of rain, uh, recent news in this week was that uh, the, the ground level, uh, the ground water level is too low because we had a drought in the summer, so that's a problem in the future, so we, are, have, to, we have to think about that, how we are going to do it. But I uh, come back to the main reason of accounting, that's because it's, it's the law. It's legal. That's, that's the law. It's... Um, uh, if if uh, the government, they, uh, they like to earn taxes, so uh, that's why we, in fact, do it. Because the law says you have to do it, you have to pay taxes at the end of the year uh, on your profit. Unfortunately, it's historical. You will not get a loan of your of your bank by a historical data. They will say, sorry, what are you going to do in the future? How is your balance within one year, two years, three years? Then you'll have to predict, you have to forecast your results. That's when management accounting comes around. Uh, it's internal and it's more, uh, yeah, it's, it's, there's no, there are no um, obligations, there are no uh, rules about uh, how you have to do it, uh, analytic accounting, you can choose how you order your accounting system. Uh, but it's mainly focused on the future. Um, during the crisis in 2008, I uh, know a company, they had a problem, their turnover went down, uh, their fixed costs, uh, fixed costs remain fixed, uh, profit is under pressure, they had to in one year, they had to make, they had to provide to the banks uh, three uh, times new balances, new uh, forecasts about their results. Were they going to be able to pay back their debts? Because if you have debts, you have to, there is a risk of debts. Uh, so that's uh, when uh, management accounting comes around. The link between the two is the cost calculation. Because at the end of the year you have to value all your inventory and you have to know your cost. If you don't know your cost, you will not be able to value all the inventory you have. And you have a lot of inventory. If you are a production company, you have work in process, you have uh, finished goods, you have a lot of. So you have to calculate, you have to know your cost uh, before you can close down your figures, your annual accounts. Otherwise you will not be able to close them. So, so that's the link between cost and financial accounting. Good. Basic info about uh, uh, cost and management account. Good. I'll, uh, this is what I told you. Okay. Uh, we'll find some extra information. I'm not going to each detail of the slides. Uh, internal use. Uh, management accounting is more about planning, decision making and controlling. That's what about. Uh, you have GAP, uh, generally accepted accounting principles. You have Belgian GAP, you have uh, Dutch GAP. Um, you have uh, Indonesian GAP, uh, I, don't, I think it's uh, linked with IFRS, I understood. It's PAX or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you're already good, you're already I like IFRS. In Belgium we use another system, um, a little bit different. Uh, so if you want to make the figures like the IFRS, you have to change them. Um, so this is a very beautiful definition of management accounting. When I talk, I give some trainings to the company Daikin. Um, they have a huge uh, production facility in Ostend in Belgium. Uh, I've seen here that all these are all uh, Daikin uh, equipment. 
Uh, so management accounting must be value adding. If you do something as a controller, you you ask data, you ask, you, you start with KPIs. Everyone knows what KPIs are. Key performance indicators. Uh, they must be creating. They must be creating value. Otherwise, you don't have to do that. You don't have to, to start to to measure it. Um, of course, it's in the beginning. It's perhaps difficult uh, when you uh, enter. In, uh, SME and you start with some KPIs, uh, not every KPI will be the right one. You have to try and to perhaps afterwards change them a little bit. But everything you do must be value adding and uh, management accounting is value adding. Continuous improvement process of planning, designing, measuring and operating and that's important. Non-financial and financial information systems. So you link all the data of your financial accounting with in our case, in, in the case of the um, environmental business uh, with uh, volumes, tonnages, uh, hours collected, uh, everything you link, these two. So that's important. So you have to organize the fact that you have to get these non-financial data. Yeah? Um, in the beginning when I worked we didn't have uh, uh, board computers in our trucks. We install board computers so that every uh, new job started by a truck driver. He said, okay, now I'm taking a container with cardboard. Now I'm taking the next container is one with uh, uh, with metals. So, uh, and then you have, if we could analyze uh, within detail our profitability per type of activity. I'm going to show you later on. So link financial and non-financial information systems and the fact is that when you start measuring things you'll influence behavior of people. So that's very, very important. I mean, uh, it's one of the essential things in management accounting, I think. Um, and hopefully when you start measuring, you start with some KPIs or other uh, elements. Um, hopefully everything you measure will guide and will uh, lead people to do the things that the strategy is realized in the company. So that's uh, that's uh, very important. Okay, because if you say to a to a, a procurement manager, for example, buy at uh, the lowest cost possible, what's the risk you can have? Sorry. The quality can be as uh, as low, uh, can get lower, and perhaps you get an, a huge inventory, and that's uh, the problem, of course. And it's it's uh, uh, perhaps an exaggerated example, but if you only say buy as cheap as possible, indeed quality, and you'll have a huge inventory, which is not good for your cash. Uh, huge inventory. Good. This is um, creating value. Otherwise, you don't have to do uh, management accounting. Um, and as long as you're, if you're a very small company, then perhaps you can do it, uh, make decisions on, on your belly feeling. Uh, belly, no, it's not uh, the right word, it's uh, gut feeling. Um, your intuition. But if you become bigger, then you have to, uh, to base your decisions on data. Uh, measuring is, uh, uh, knowing uh, is measuring. You have to measure things in your organization. And that's the function of a controller. You have to start setting up procedures to, to know things. Uh, here you, um, you have a, a perfect system. You come in, you have to, to register with your fingerprints. Uh, everyone knows who's, who's here or not. If you don't do it, we don't have it in Belgium. So we don't have it. Uh, so we don't know if how, how much uh, students attend the classes or not. So that's uh, interesting here to see. Okay, what about strategy? Um, so planning, uh, divided in uh, uh, strategy, positioning and budgeting. Uh, so that are all topics you can deal with as, uh, as a controller. Uh, when I talk about strategy and I work do some exercises with uh, companies, I work with the model, the business model canvas. Already heard of that? I opened it on the internet. So this is the business model canvas. And the essential part of it, uh, it's a sort of brainstorming tool. Uh, you have to look in a company, what's, what's my value proposition? Why is a customer willing to pay or to come to my company and not to the competitor? 
right? so that's you, know, you can brainstorm on that. There is online there are online systems where you can uh, brainstorm with people here in uh, in uh, Georgia Carta and someone in uh, Surabaya on the same topic. You can do that online. There are a lot of possibilities. Yeah, you look at your customer segments. Of course, there is a big evolution huh, of technology. We're going to see that too. Talk about that. Um, if you if you uh, uh, customer segments in the past you could segment them but now with all data available like Gojek and, and Grab and so on it's are all individuals perhaps we all give them individual uh, information uh, so the, um, this model is also influenced by new technology it's not a fill-in exercise when you work with this it's more um, the link between the two between all all um, elements on the, this canvas. It's a visualization of your business and it helps once you have this uh, you see where the revenue is coming from, where your cost structure is and then you can make a, a PL. So that gives uh, an idea on the strategy. Good, break even. I'll see if I have uh, uh, take a uh, take talk about that later. Investment analysis is also important in a company of course. Uh, payback period uh, I think you all of you have already seen investment I or R and net present value and these things I suppose so uh, important um, what about um, uh, costing and decisions uh, uh, guiding the company in the good direction for the strategy then we're talking about costing I implemented myself with other people activity-based costing in a company um, direct costing and to give an ID when we uh, started I'm going to try to it's uh, Belgium very quickly drawn uh, started in the uh, waste business uh, it's, uh, the legislation is coming uh, the, the blue sack uh, is introduced so there are starting facilities we start one in uh, there are facilities in Isigam, there is one in Bruges, there is one in Brussels, uh, there is in Antwerp, uh, and so on. In the beginning, I'm going to talk about direct costing. In the beginning, the prices for shorting were 200 euro per ton. But due to the uh, more and more sorting facilities in, the, uh, in Belgium, uh, the prices dropped till... Uh, Tenders, you have to do uh, to do tenders uh, to a price of 135 euro per ton in the sorting facility. The question is, as of course, of a, as a company, how are you going to deal with that? Because your, I think that the the, the total cost, uh, the full cost at that time at Suez, I think it was about something like uh, 170 euro. Are you going within that competition or not? Because if you uh, uh, you are getting uh, you are getting um, or doing the tender at uh, at 135, yes or not? Okay. Our um, variable cost, then you have to use direct costing. Uh, you have to look at your uh, um, your turnover. your sales uh, minus your variable costs and in this case it was about uh, for for uh, CETA that was uh, or Suez environment that was at that time about 130 euro per ton so we had still a margin if we we could we uh, entered that tenders and we still had a margin of 5 euro on our um, uh, variable costs it's not a lot, but it helps to get, to cover part of your fixed costs. Because if you don't do the business, you lose that uh, covering of that five euro per ton. If you don't have the tonnages, that's the same in the, in the um, same happened in the in the auto uh, in the car industry in 2008. A big problem in, in the US also and uh, crisis. Uh, General Motors sold cars at a very very low price just to keep their facilities running. 
to keep covering a little bit of the fixed costs, although the margin on the, on the variable cost was very, very low, but it still was a little bit to cover fixed costs. So that or calculations as a, you'll not find that in your, uh, in your financial accounting, you have to do the, the, the cost calculations yourself uh, in, uh, in the company. Good. Um, that's about costing, outsourcing, special orders, and so on. All elements you have to deal with. Uh, I'll give a little example of standard costs um, and variance analysis um, later on. I'll talk about that. So, what are the possible responsibilities of a controller? Um, creating uh, periodic reporting, some management reporting. Customer profitability analysis. I'm going to explain you the whale curve. So, if with a little bit imagination, this is a whale. Yeah. Um, these are clients. Number of clients. Number of clients. And this is the euro. And uh, uh, let's say that it's a, a sort of contribution margin, gross margin. Margin. So you make an analysis of all your clients. You look at the profitability of your clients. You need to do a, a good analysis, of course, to get that. Yeah. You order your clients from the, the first client. Yeah. Is, uh, he, he, the first client has a good profitability. That's the first, uh, the first uh, dot here. The second client has a little bit less uh, gross margin. Huh? And then you, you order all these clients, and in a lot of companies this situation will happen. So if, let's say this is about 60,000 euro, if you don't make this type of analysis, you'll see that the result of the company is about 60,000 euro. And you're happy. If the results regarding your turnover is, let's say, 10%, then you're happy with that, okay. But if you go more in detail as a controller, you will see that the possible, re the possible result could have been uh, double. Let's say that this is 120. You have to deal as a controller and as an organization with these 20% uh, of clients who don't who give a negative margin. You lose on this, these type of clients. Uh, although, if you, with this type of analysis, uh, sometimes they have a huge turnover. It reduces sales. It's, uh, in analysis, it's often seen that the sales is high for these type of clients, but they have a negative contribution margin. So that's the type of analysis you have to do as a control. We had we have implemented an activity-based costing model, and we had um, that uh, commercial action after afterwards. Uh, I wasn't glad with uh, with uh, the name of the action. It was uh, called kill kill or cure. We kill the client, we stop with the collaboration of the client, or we cure. Uh, it was not such a good name commercially, I found, but uh, um, due to the analysis, we increased profitability. Because if you don't gain any money on your clients, you have to do something, something, or you do your, something yourself as an organization, or your client is trying to do something. Okay. So you can present the figures of your clients on different ways. You can uh, also uh, work with dots and with uh, uh, circles and so on. But this is a type of analysis uh, you have to do as a controller. Um, I'll give you an example of uh, variance analysis of costs and uh, uh, mix and volume comparison, of course, with the budget. That's uh, one of the typical things you have to do as a controller. Creating uh, the budget and the business plan. Um, monitoring the objectives of the company by making a small dashboard. Um, you can visualize that in systems, ERP systems will become more and more performant. They will give you a sort of, of cockpit picture. Uh, you have uh, 
a lot of tiles and when the, the color is green then everything is okay if the color is becomes red then the management have to dig into that uh, negative figure but in small and medium-sized enterprises you don't have a lot of uh, this uh, information so you have to to look yourself for uh, kpis and i gave here some examples revenue per day for example for turnover revenue per product and so on as a controller you have to look for bottlenecks I give you the link to this uh, site. It's a very interesting site. It's uh, business improvement. You find there a lot of uh, information about uh, management topics, and it's also in English. I'm going to see if I have it here. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, so you find there a lot of information. Well, you find examples of companies about. I had to study this book when I did my master. I had to uh, to read the book, The Goal. Uh, it's about theory of constraints in a, in a company. There are a lot of uh, bottlenecks happening. It can be administration, it can be logistics, it can be... And if there is a bottleneck in an organization, it's, um, it's a problem with the throughput, with the money. It doesn't go fast enough through the, through the organization. Uh, the aim of an organization is to create in cash, uh, because with cash you can do other things. And if there is a, there are too many bottlenecks, uh, there is a, a problem. If you solve one bottleneck, you'll get another uh, somewhere else. Uh, but here, that's a very good and interesting site. I give it uh, as an information. Good KPIs. Uh, we have to move on. Um, one thing about uh, I will uh, tell you here is about uh, complaints. I give advice that uh, in a small and medium-sized enterprise, when I entered that company, I think eight years ago, there was no registration of complaints. A complaint is a gift of your client. He says, dear company, I have a problem. There is something wrong in your organization. I'm not going to tell you that every client has always, is always right. But he gives you this is the, the information that there's something wrong if, he's, um, if it's okay. And you can do something about that. It's a gift. He says there is something wrong in the organization, so do something about it. Huh? Um, but you have to report it, of course. You have to register. What kind of uh, complaint is it? Is it a complaint about service? Is it about the quality? Is it about uh, the delivery? Uh, a lot of things you have to register, and once you know uh, there are more complaints about delivery, then you have to do something about the delivery in your company. Uh, service levels and all these things. Good. Uh, operational, okay, a lot of uh, uh, KPIs, and in fact you have to try to put everything on one A4 page. If you have one A4 page of KPIs of a company, and one A4 page of your P&L, that must be enough. Some companies have reports and reports and no one is reading them. Try to be as, as uh, brief as possible and try to, to look at the essence of the organization. We'll look a little bit further uh, later on on, um, on uh, cash. Uh, days customer supplier credit, days sales outstanding, days purchase outstanding and days inventory outstanding. That's that are important parts when we talk about cash. Good. Um, setting up a transparent, oh, sorry. Setting up a transparent calculation, cost calculation system. Um, that's uh, quite important, of course. Huh? Um, it helps you perhaps in pricing real products in the market. But it's not the only point, of course. Eh? Your cost is not the only point when you set, uh, set prices. Um, a lot of companies, when they want to uh, improve their profit, they say we're going to do cost cutting. But cost cutting only affects bottom line. And when you do 1% cost cutting, you have 6% bottom line better results. If you can increase your prices with 1%, you have 12% bottom line results. So price increases, always take that also into account to uh, increase the results of your company. And of course you have to create 
analytical accounting. You will not find it in your legal accounting, <coughs> where the profitability is. So you have to analyze and create that as a control. You have to create accounts to see which products were, and so on, you make uh, profit. Good, about uh, ERP systems. Um, yeah. Um, I didn't tell you that, but uh, within uh, Suez environment and within uh, the company, they, they change regularly from name. Um, we had uh, uh, I started in a smaller company, and there were mergers and mergers, and uh, um, the, I'm, I'm, I changed from jobs every two, three years. Uh, in other in other uh, entities, um, so we had to change each time also our management reporting uh, because that responsibility has changed. Um, so we had to also uh, look at that everything we gathered was correct. That's also an important element in control. But I have to look at the time. It's only. 5.30, so I have to continue. Um, as a controller, uh, look at the business perspective uh, of IT. Don't let IT people implement your ERP. Okay, they have to help, but look at you yourself at the business perspective. Okay, as you have to understand all processes and so on, and of course the accounting system. Um, perhaps you already heard about Microsoft Power BI? Business, Business Intelligence Power BI. It's a, a free online tool. Uh, you can uh, make beautiful uh, uh, diagrams, a uh, lot of colors. Uh, we are um, implementing this for our students in uh, Vivas University. Uh, Odoo, I have the luck. I'm. Uh, joining um, and I'm assisting to the implementation of an ERP system in a small and medium-sized enterprise and I saw these, this uh, uh, program, it's not, uh, everyone knows SAP? Uh, this is another one, it's an open source program, Toyota is working also, a little part of Toyota is working with that, Odo, it's a Belgian company, um, so that uh, gives some possibilities. Good. Um, Possible role of control. Based on your experience, which one is most challenging or critical for life of a company? I think, uh, yeah. Uh, All of them are important. Right? There, yeah, cash is more important than uh, an investment analysis. These two are, I think, the most important ones. But it all depends on in which business you are. Okay. If you are in a fast-growing company like uh, Go. Gojek or Gro or Grab or uh, you are in Twitter or in uh, you know, your focus will be especially on cash. If you are in a company like Daikin, uh, there there will be uh, more focus on perhaps on investment analysis because they have to invest in regularly in a lot of things. Um, good. This is uh, I'm not going to explain that one. It's just a system. Uh, uh, if you have, well, just quickly then. <laughs> um, if, for example, your direct costs or uh, um, 90% and your indirect costs or 10%, then you don't have to implement a very complex cost calculation system to know your costs. If your direct costs are 50% and your indirect costs are 50%, then perhaps you have to think about activity-based costing or another way of allocating your indirect costs. That's a little bit what's... Uh, stated here. If you only have one person uh, and if you're in this, this situation here of 50% indirect costs and you use a very simple situation, a very simple cost calculation system, then perhaps you make a lot of mistakes. So the total cost will be high if you have in this situation. So you have to look uh, at the system where the, 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 the mistake cost and decreases and the cost of the calculation system is uh, at a reasonable level. That's what I uh, meant here. Push managers to act strategically. That's also one of uh, the actions as a control. Then let's move on to, uh, to the organization and the effect on 
on a, the role of a controller. Uh, that's a system I want to explain to you. Does everyone know uh, what SMART is? When you set a goal, you give a goal to someone. Okay. That's a really important one. I implemented this within the company, but it takes some effort to keep track of that. It uh, takes some effort. I'm going to talk about the goal roll through system. Uh, smart goals, here you have them, uh, I'm not going to uh, go in detail, but the main aspect is that the person does, uh, sometimes we call it accept, but he agrees. Uh, perhaps you will be responsible later in the future as a manager for some people. Make sure if you set a goal for someone that he agrees and that's realistic, because otherwise he will not do it, he will not be motivated. So try to, to think about that. Um, this is the goal roll true system. So it's, um, you know, I have to make it in English because it's in Dutch there. I have to translate it. So, first of all, set a goal. What's the goal of the company? Perhaps your uh, double digit growth, 10% uh, growth. Make a plan. Who, uh, Make a plan. What are you going to do to reach the goal? Sales have to do something. Operation has to do something. Um, assign. Say, say to someone what he has to do, and then you do the follow-up. Okay. And if uh, you have to adapt the plan, of course, on a regular basis. Good. And you cannot do that on every level in the organization. We did that on the sorting line. We did it in our uh, sorting facilities, uh, looking at our, all our people. And you have to report on that. If you report here, this is a report, uh, reporting if you have the white, uh, the blue colors. It's per shift, the sorting line that was per shift. This was per day or per week uh, on a manager level and on the top level is perhaps per uh, per month. If you want to implement this, it takes some effort to do that on a regular basis and uh, constantly. Good. Uh, okay, the structure. Okay, just a quick uh, elements on um, the management control structure. I, I hear that some of you are um, working on that or following courses on that. Um, so the management control structure is uh, which departments should be managed, which, who is responsible for what and what activities, uh, how are all these activities being coordinated. So I'm going further on that. So that's a functional structure. You, uh, you'll see that this is the divisional structure. This is the matrix structure. And you see, as a controller, you will be influenced by the structure of your company about how you're analyzing, how your analytical accounting will be. Because this person needs other information than this person. Okay? So you have to organize yourself. As I say, as I already told, the evolution in the waste business sector was so huge, a lot of mergers, so we each time had to adapt our analytical accounting and our reporting system. I'm going quickly over this. Perhaps you are in this situation, uh, self-management teams then you have another way of reporting. I'm going to get a little bit quicker on that. Um, as this is important, I want to focus and tell you a little bit on this. PNL by destinations, by destination, that's in an SAP uh, system. I'm going to show you, to a little, give you a little bit of an example of that. So, As I already told, if you give figures to people, make sure <coughs> that they are, or, um, that uh, that's the right figures, and will, because they will be influenced, they will be influenced in their behavior. So, 
if you if you give a figure to a sales person, make sure that that our figures he can only influence. Um, in this case, uh, in the system of PNL by destination, it's called responsibility responsibility reporting, and it's very easy to do that in uh, in uh, SAP. And it's about also it's about standard costs. Uh, more in a production facility, you can use this. Um, so this is the budget. You have uh, ten thousand units you want to sell, but the real volumes are twelve thousand in this case. So um, by the system of PNL by destination, you give. You explain that the bottom result of your company, who's responsible for that? In this case, the salespeople are responsible for the minus 4,000 result in that period. You look at the total real sales and you deduct the cost of goods sold at standard prices. These are the same prices and the budget. You see here the six. Yeah, that's the same price, because they are not salespeople are not responsible for the fact that you produced better or worse or that. They are only responsible for the sales. So give them a, a figure that they can understand, and they will not be. They are not responsible for the cost of goods sold here. You can split that. Yeah? I uh, make that analysis. I had to make that analysis uh, formally. You can split that in a mix. A volume and a price variance. Let's now look at the, at the production. Keep in mind this element, the six. Let's have a look here at the six. Uh, for um, cost of goods sold over bread, for example. It's a high price, but it's just an example. Uh, six, this is the cost of goods sold, the standard price. For the production responsible, this is his revenue between brackets you see it that's his revenue he will be responsible for his efficiency so you deduct from his revenue uh, the material costs the material costs of course is the real consumption of material at standard prices okay because the price of the material bought that's the responsibility of the procurement so the procurement manager will get another report. So that's the way you can set up this system uh, with linked with standard cost prices. Okay. So the only thing you get here is the 3,000 uh, production will have an effect on the bottom line. It's very important. You'll know sales is responsible bottom line for minus 4,000. Production is responsible for plus 3,000 in this case. Okay. So it gives you an idea about responsibility uh, reporting. Good. I have to move. So it's around uh, six. Everyone is moving out. Yes, question. Uh, can I ask? Yes. Um, I've read, I've learned about, about um, responsibility centers from the management control system by Robert Anthony. And it says that the advantage of the business unit uh, structure is easier to allo um, to distribute the responsibility centers. Do you agree with that? The business unit center structure is easier. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, the that's, case. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. Um, should all organization should be divided in business unit uh, structure, or is division of unit is still important as well? It depends from organization to organization. You have to choose the structure which is best for you. There is not, uh, not every organization, um, you cannot copy from one organization to another. Uh, I think a uh, big company like uh, Bicart, uh, still a producing company in Belgium, uh, they change from a business unit by country to more uh, product reporting again uh, over bigger regions. So it often changes also in, in a company. The way they, uh, I, I've, I had to change regularly the way we reported because the structure of the company uh, changed. So, 
but business units is, it's, I think, indeed a, a good one. Um, depending on how you decide, uh, how, you, how you define business unit. Is there an investment responsibility? Is there a, uh, can he uh, decide on uh, engaging a personnel or not? Uh, and all these things. Good. Um, is that a, a, an answer? Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, the essence of controlling and uh, doing the right things instead of uh, the things right. Uh, the things do it, that you do, uh, doing them uh, good, no, try to do the right things. Uh. So I'm going a little bit um, quicker. Other elements in um, playing a role within um, this, the, the controlling uh, area, and I give it, it's because I'm also teaching environmental management, I give these uh, these elements, but it's a challenging environment now we are living in. So, um, uh, different labelings and reporting, uh, the Global Reporting Initiative. Uh, I think the annual report of a company will become more... Um, where did I put my stick? The annual report will become one. Uh, you'll have a, a CSR, a sustainability report, and, um, and the annual report, it, it will be one, one report, I think, uh, carbon footprint. Um, there is sustainability indexes. They do it uh, not uh, worse than a regular, and even sometimes uh, better than um, uh, uh, than the regular stocks, which are not uh, working so sustainable. Companies which uh, where the CEO is a woman also do better on the stock exchange than uh, companies led by a man. So, opportunity. Oh, I, I see. <laughs> Here's some uh, reaction from the dean. But uh, in Belgium, uh, that's uh, the case. Good uh, global warming, some legislation, your uh, Paris Agreement uh, is coming. Uh, CO2 emissions, ETS in uh, China implemented in 2018. Uh, energy efficiency is one of the, the elements in, uh, uh, in the world and, and the cornerstone of the European uh, environmental legislation. Use the energy energy you have as efficient as possible. The lights don't have to be on, turn them off. Okay. Uh, circular economy. I'd like to mention this one, but we don't have time enough. Uh, ZERI, Zero Emission Research and Initiatives. You'll find there are more than 200 innovations of, uh, of, uh, of a person, a Belgian guy. Uh, Gunter Pauli, he gathered more than 3,000 scientists and what the essence of this, uh, this, these innovations is look at nature. Uh, how is nature doing and try to make business out of that. Um, one uh, beautiful example is in Italy uh, where there, were, um, there was a, uh, an uh, oil refinery had to be closed down. They looked in the region what's available, they were growing a lot of uh, distals, that's a weed. They looked with the scientists, what can we do with distals? And they are now, uh, they didn't close down the company, but they uh, rever they converted it to, uh, um, uh, to a distillation of distals. And they have now um, uh, green polymers uh, and oil uh, out of this weed, so-called weed. Uh, so that's... Uh, have a look on that because that's uh, it's, uh, all linked with circular economy. Uh, that's something we've already seen. Uh, challenging environment, environment. I don't know if you know this uh, lady. Uh, she's uh, Greta Thunberg in uh, Europe. She's well known. Um, protesting on the protest marches, which has been followed in Belgium and in other, all other parts of uh, Europe. Yeah. I have to go on. Urbanization, uh, it's also one of the topics uh, as a company, as a controller. You have to have a broad scope when you have, uh, when you are working as a controller. Um, uh, opportunities for kind of, for companies. I did a visit here at uh, Atex uh, Gracic near Surabaya. I visited the company. Opportunities for that company to to build uh, low weight uh, constructions on top of buildings and to. Uh, more prefab uh, constructions, new technologies, um, data will be the new gold, I think. Uh, um, 
new algorithms and small, smart algorithms. Um, but yeah, they had to fire more than 1,000 lawyers in the Deloitte uh, structure because their, uh, their algorithms were smart enough to cover all the contracts with problems. So, uh, okay, let's move on. Robotics and so on. So, uh, competence of a controller, uh, that's uh, very important. And communicate about everything, helicopter view. I think I've mentioned a lot of the things uh, for a controller. I have a small, uh, very nice video here about uh, uh, the chicken. Uh, keep your head cool. Uh, I'm just going to start it a little bit and then I continue. You have an, uh, an ID about, uh, but I think as a controller you have to um, to keep your head cool and uh, focus on on the business. Perhaps you've seen this video once. I don't know. To be a head, yes, the head of the company. Keep it cool and try to focus on the future. Good. Um, here you see a, a vacancy of a, in a small and medium-sized enterprise. That all the elements I mentioned are here proactive. Uh, and that's one of the things you have to do. Um, I'd like to talk about some ratios um, because cash is king in a company, and I'll do that by uh, some examples of... Um, I compared here three companies. Uh, cash is king, I said uh, the DNA spot is important, well cash is very important in the company. Uh, these are um, uh, some, int uh, some ratios about profitability. I think you first have to look if the company is profitable, uh, if, she is, if the company is financially healthy, if she's generating cash enough, operating efficient and if she create if the company is creating value um, so comparing these companies uh, Daikin, uh, Greenyard and Tencent you see the the gross margin differences between these two these companies uh, the one is a, um, yeah, a producer of, of uh, investment material uh, Greenyard is a, a grocer uh, working on uh, um, uh, he's um, um, working on uh, fresh vegetables and fresh fruits and uh, uh, fresh meals. Uh, that's, uh, you see the margins are very low in this case and Tencent is more uh, on uh, yeah, IT <coughs> businesses and, uh, and games. Who of you uh, is playing games on his smartphone or his computer? Who already paid for some elements in the game. <laughs> Only one is daring to rise his races. But that's where Tencent is getting the money. Uh, because we pay for uh, the person uh, we play with, we pay for a jacket, we pay for this. Uh, Fortnite is one of the biggest games worldwide. Uh, it's uh, Tencent having that uh, created that game. Uh, when uh, China decided that they couldn't launch new games, the, the price of Tencent and uh, the share went, uh, went down. Um, return on equity, okay. I'm not going to have, uh, I'm not able to go too, too much in detail. So especially evolutions. Evolution is very important in this case. Uh, evolution of uh, growth. Uh, how is this? Uh, and this was the problem in the case of uh, Greenyard. Uh, profitability came under pressure because the harvests were not successful due to drought. Uh, stock price decreased because uh, when you look at the company, if they are financially healthy or not. Um, let's uh, have a look here. Is this a financially healthy company? Do you know that? Looking at these figures. Yes or no? What, what is a, a good percentage of stockholders' equity towards total capital? What is a good percentage? How are banks looking to you as a company? What is a good percentage? 50%, 75%, 2%, 3%? What is a good percentage in a company? Yes? 
No, the stockholders' equity. Because that's the, the basis of the firm. That's the, the buffer. If you make loss, you, make, you have loss, less equity. If you make profit, your equity increases. So the buffer, they say, banks, uh, a healthy company, 30%. For a production company, um, 30, 35%. For a services company, uh, 24%. So this, this must be 24% towards the total uh, assets, total liabilities. What is this difference here between fixed assets and long-term uh, assets, long-term uh, resources? What's the difference between that? How, how is that called? That's the working capital. Huh? Okay, so that's important, working capital too, in a company. And there's a difference between the picture, because that's a picture huh? um, of the company. So if uh, it's, um, it's only a, a momentum, but treasury in a company, it's each day your there is a fluctuation of your cash because you have to pay wages, you have to pay suppliers, you have to pay, the, in Belgium you have a 13th month to pay and you have uh, holiday payments to do. Uh, so there is a fluctuation each day of your cash. So you have to follow up. And that's why the cash um, elements here are so important. And uh, the cash conversion cycle, I'm going to explain it. But you see here why the risk was so high at uh, Green Yard, because they have a huge debt. They have 80, 58 percent of debt towards total, um, uh, total. Uh, well, the comparison, uh, long-term debt equity. Uh, so for banks, it was a, a risk. If you agree on banks, if you agree on a loan with a bank, you have to sign a contract, a covenant, and the covenant says, if you get the loan from us. We, as bank, your equity must be at least 30% or 25%. Your cash flow, operational cash flow, must be so so high. There are a lot of rules, and if you don't respect the rules, and if there is a problem, you get loss. You have losses, like Green Yard. Banks are coming to you and saying, "We had an agreement. You have to increase capital again. You have to go to the stock exchange, or you have to go to another uh, financial partner getting money for you." Uh, the company Tesla has, perhaps now they already made some profit, but they have the luck that uh, Elon Musk is sponsoring this, the, this company. Otherwise, they would all already a long time have been bankrupt. If you find, as long as you find a good sponsor and you find enough people who want to give you money, that's okay. But, uh, so that's important too, cash. And cash flow and con confidence, okay? Um, the current ratio. I don't know if you know this one. Um, if all these current liabilities, all the greens, say we want our money back now, then you can sell these assets, the other green assets. You can pay back all these uh, current liabilities. The only problem is the inventory. That's the least current of it. So if uh, the asset test is without the inventory. Okay. But let's go back to the cash. And then I want to show the income statement, but I have no time anymore. Um, the cash conversion cycle. Uh, have you heard of that? Yes? Okay. So this company, this is a retailer, more sort of a retailer. Uh, Green Yard, this is an industrial company. And of course, there is a lot of inventory, because in the inventory of a, a production company, there are wages, there is uh, raw material, there is a lot of a lot of. Uh, Inventory here, uh, 90, they had three months of inventory. So you cannot do anything with that money because that's already spent. You have to wait 60 days before you get your money from your clients. And you have to pay your suppliers after 43 days. So you have to finance to overcome a period of 109 days. In the retail, like uh, uh, Indo market, you know Indomart? Indomart. Uh, Indomart is a Belgian company. Uh, that's a Belgian Dutch company. There's the symbol of the lion. The symbol of the lion is uh, originate, originally from, uh, from Belgium. And they went together with the company Aholt, A H H uh, A H. 
so they're also in uh, they're also in the uh, US and so on. So in the in the retail, uh, they play with the money of the customers. They uh, for, sorry for the, of the suppliers, and they wait to pay their suppliers, and they wait 68 days. But we pay immediately in the shop, uh, so they don't have a lot of inventory. Uh, that's the situation. Tencent, you see, they wait 170 days. That's what I started the presentation with. Um, so that's important. Huh? Um, concerning valuation, how much you pay for that stock? Okay, 2.4, 2.4 times um, the equity. Here, 0 0.3. Perhaps that's is, it's a cheap, huh? but there is a risk on debt there. Okay. I'm going to explain you the last thing about uh, income statement. DSO, the formulas are there and so on. Uh, I have some tips here how you can work uh, in practice about uh, your DSO and your, uh, uh, but we don't have the time to explain that. But I want to show you the income statement of uh, Suez and uh, when I go to companies where I work with. So this is the income statement where when I uh, around the period, I think, uh, no, before I left. But you see here the link between uh, financial and non-financial data. Uh, this is the activity, big containers, the big uh, trucks. This is the small containers. You see them uh, around uh, the corner everywhere. Uh, small bins from 250 liters to uh, 1,100 liters. Uh, and you decide, that's what I started with, with an in. Uh, you have an internal report. That's not uh, that's not this report. Huh? The, the legal report here of uh, this company here. Uh, that's one of the big tobacco companies here in Indonesia. Uh, um, this is not giving a lot of information. It's the legal side. You don't see even here if they have a lot of depreciations here, yes or no. You don't find it here, okay? So internally, you choose your reporting yourself. You don't see here if they make a lot of profit in the, uh, which, what kind of cigarettes, in what, uh, if that's uh, the cigarettes or the tobacco itself, and so on. You don't see that here. So you choose how you present your figures as an income statement yourself as a controller. In this case, there was a turnover. We deduct our elimination costs and the buying of the material. We buy material from our uh, clients uh, who bring uh, paper and cardboard, metal and so on. They bring uh, material to our company. We send them automatically because they, we have a weighing. We had a weighing bridge. We send them automatically a note. Please send us an invoice uh, for that or that amount because you brought us paper and cardboard. Uh, you brought us uh, metals yeah, and so on. Or we collected it for them. And strangely enough, some clients don't send the invoice. We had a positive effect. And at the end of the year, uh, closing down our figures, uh, closing down the year, we had uh, uh, regularly positive effects because we had booked already the cost and the invoice of the client didn't come. That's one of the important things of DSO. They sales outstanding and, and, and income and cash Make sure you invoice. A lot of companies forget it. They work, 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 and they forget to invoice, to send uh, send invoices. Okay, good. Uh, so here are your sales. So these were our costs of elimination, landfill, and uh, incineration, um, cost per ton, and then we had our first gross margin. So that was very important here because because this is linked to legislation. If uh, environmental legislation they increases the environmental taxes, we could not immediately increase our prices. So this uh, was a percentage. There are no percentages here, but the, the importance is that you make percentages also uh, after that. Gross added value, and then we had our other variable costs, our collection costs for our uh, drivers, our trucks, without the uh, depreciation costs. So. Uh, that's why it's called here mar margin on variable costs. Okay, so much done. And then you had uh, the rest to cover all fixed costs. Okay, 
So and it's not because you lose here uh, in total on this activity that you have to skip it, because you still have a 33 million uh, <coughs> covering fixed uh, costs. Good. The last example I'm going to show you is um, this one. Not a chicken. No, not a chicken anymore. <laughs> so you choose. This is when I go to companies. I work with this model. Uh, it's just a little bit the same principle, of course. Huh? It's um, so you choose as a controller the groups of products you sell. Okay. Uh, cigarettes, uh, loss, uh, or uh, tobacco, packed, uh, and so on. You choose your products yourself. You choose which are the variable costs. Then you get a contribution margin. Then you have your fixed costs. After your fixed costs, you have your overhead costs. You have to decide in a company. You have to decide in a company which is which costs are variable, which are fixed. You will not find it in your annual account. Huh? That's the legal part. Um, and then at the end you have a result and once because you know this percentage here this contribution margin I don't know if the formula of break-even you divide all your fixed costs by that percentage and so you know your break-even point in this case uh, uh, the break-even point 1.2 million let's say uh, if you divide all your fixed costs by the 0 0.45% you get 1.2, and this is uh, uh, a comparison uh, of the annual uh, year to month. You have the budget besides it, and, and so on. And then on that side, you have the monthly figures. That's important uh, to look at your um, uh, figures like that. And of course, behind this, you have to look at your accounts and decide that's setting up the model. Setting up the model is deciding, for example, it's in Dutch, but uh, uh, there was a part buildings uh, in the, um, the um, PNL. Well, you decide these and these and these and these accounts or building. Uh, administration, these and these and these accounts are uh, linked to administration. The positive and the, in, the interesting thing about this type of reporting is it's not linked with accounting numbers. You can compare an Indonesian company with a Belgian company because the management reporting structure is the same. You link different um, accounts to different groups. And you link here, you see it, this, the six accounts in Belgium are costs, the seven accounts are revenue. So you can link revenue to a part of a cost so that's also important. So it gives you a little bit an idea about um, about uh, income statement and how I use it in um, in business. Let's have a look where I was. Okay. So uh, let's come to the conclusion. I hope you get an idea. I, I took perhaps some time to explain you what a controller is what the function of a controller is. Uh, it's a very challenging period, I think. A lot of things happening. There is environmental changes, there is uh, uh, urbanization, there is uh, technology changing a lot. Um, cash is king, I hope you remember that. Uh, cash is very important in a company. Try to work on that uh, when, you, uh, when you're later in, uh, in business. And, um, of course, uh, look at your internal accounting and your internal P&L. Look how you present it. Uh, and that's important. Uh, there's a difference between internal and external reporting. I hope you uh, have uh, understood uh, that point. And I hope I give you, gave you some uh, hints uh, when you have to look at, you have to look at Ziri. Uh, the website, there are a lot of uh, new innovations possible. Um, the future is yours, uh, I should say. Uh, grab it. Uh, that's uh, a link to uh, the, <laughs> the company here, Grab. But uh, you have to grab your future. There is, the future is yours. You have uh, a lot of uh, interesting uh, possibilities. Good. Terima kasih for your attention.
No problem. Yes. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Thank you very much. I for went a little bit quick, perhaps, to some points, but uh, you'll get the presentation. You'll get uh, the information. Uh, any more? Any questions? Okay. Uh, thank you uh, for the chance. So I've been head at what's the uh, S plan controller uh, for four years in. Uh, one of the multinational company in Indonesia, but uh, I want to ask you, uh, as uh, the controller, uh, some things that uh, uh, there must be something that beyond beyond your control. Then uh, how come you deal with that kind of situation? For the things you cannot control, you say. Or uh, can uh, I do yeah. understand? Uh, or right? maybe uh, you mitigate your uh, risk as the controller? Okay, uh, sometimes uh, the financial the, uh, fi uh, financial data uh, was that depends on the depends on the uh, other department. Mm -hmm. What's the uh, other department's uh, performance? Then uh, how come you deal with the other department that uh, sometimes you cannot uh, uh, be on your control uh, of the other? Uh, what's the yeah, because it's another department yeah. who is responsible yeah, uh -huh. for that, and they okay, but that's affect the financial data. Yeah, then. yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's a little bit the point. What I wanted to explain with PNL by destination, if you try to give the right figures to the right person where he's responsible for, then you'll see that that person is responsible. But what I understand from your question is that perhaps you get figures in your department, mm -hmm. inf influenced by other departments, mm -hmm. but perhaps you are held responsible for. Was that, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that's the problem indeed in a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. you are, you're getting figures and they say, Bottom line, that's the result where you are responsible for, but you are not because there is indeed some influence from other companies, uh, from other departments. So that's indeed the point. That's the, as a controller, you have to try to set up that type of reporting that you have not that type of situation. But it's neat, it's difficult. We had this, uh, the discussions in my experience with uh, the different departments and the commercial people say said, no, it's not the data you give me are not correct. Uh, the profitability I talked to you, to you uh, uh, they, uh, they doubted about the figures, but we said no, they are they're correct. Um, especially because we had an activity, a re relatively complex activity based costing model. Uh, model. But indeed, um, uh, I think if you want to do something on in, uh, because that's the aim of, a, of a, a controller trying to guide your company to better results. Because the fiscal optimizations are to fiscal people, I think. And, uh, you first have to, to look that the margin is high enough. Uh, your operational margin. I didn't talk about EBDA, but, but um, EBDA is one of the big and interesting uh, figures you have to look at. because, And they also talk now about re-BDA, recurring EBDA. Uh, um, because if you have an EBDA, every, no, everyone knows what EBDA is. Uh, so that's earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. Uh, so that's operational cash flow. That's about the business. You don't take into account, uh, you, can compare, you can compare this figure with another country, with another company in another, in another country, because their tax is excluded the way the company is depreciating, is valuing the assets, is, is extracted of this. So if you have a company uh, um, applying a quick depreciation, you have that also, uh, but you don't take into account the depreciations. So one company is, quick is doing quick depreciation, another one is doing regular, regular linear, linear depreciation. So. Uh, this is extracted. The way they deal with amortizations is excluded. So you really have um, interest. The way, the way it's financed is, is excluded. 
uh, if this company is financed by a lot of debt or if it's uh, uh, of they have a lot of equity equity also costs money uh, because you have to pay a dividend uh, another element when investment analysis I'm talking about investment now uh, is the way it costs of capital uh, you know, way at average cost of capital uh, I think you also heard about that uh, if you do an investment try to be at the profitability which is higher than your whack because otherwise you'll uh, uh, you'll uh, yeah you'll uh, destroy uh, uh, money as a controller the 80 20 principle is also uh, important perhaps you know that one if you have to do something in a company try to focus on the biggest post, the, busy, the biggest amounts if uh, the raw material is a big amount in your company then try to focus to to set up procedures that you follow up how it's going with that uh, uh, big amount 80% huh? of our clients is giving 20% of your results that's what I what I've shown you here with with this graph huh? uh, this 20% of the clients gives you this result this 60% uh, give you not a lot of results no almost no margin and this these percentage of clients uh, they make uh, that you come up with a result of 60 instead of 120 uh, focus on the big uh, the big elements where can you where you where you can act on okay other question anybody else please Perhaps. raise your hand if there is no more questions and things we will close the question and answer sessions again thank you very much mr johans and if you have time and are willing and you find a good sponsor come to belgium it's uh, <laughs> a nice uh, a nice country very small